Hi, I'm Joyce Flynn, a pharmacist from the Anticoagulation Clinic at our Palo Alto site. During this presentation, I'll be joined by my colleagues from the Palo Alto and Mountain View clinics, and we'll be talking to you about what warfarin is and how it works, why you're taking it, and how you can help yourself. Warfarin is the generic name for Coumadin, an anticoagulant medication that is used to help prevent clots from forming in your blood. If a clot has already formed, warfarin does not dissolve the clot, but it prevents it from getting bigger and it prevents new ones from forming. Over time, your body will reabsorb the clot on its own. Warfarin is an important medication because blood clots that form can break off and travel to vital organs like your brain, causing a stroke. You may already be familiar with two other anticoagulants called heparin and anoxaparin, or Lovenox. These medications are both given by injection. Warfarin is currently the only anticoagulant medication you can take by mouth. Alternatives to warfarin are actively being designed and researched, but are not yet available. Warfarin works by blocking some of the clotting proteins in your blood, meaning you are less likely to form a dangerous blood clot. Your body will still be able to heal from cuts and bruises, but it may take longer. It is important for you to know why you are taking warfarin. You are either at risk for forming a blood clot, or you already have a blood clot that needs treatment. The most common reason people take warfarin is because they have atrial fibrillation and other risk factors for a stroke, so this is what this video will talk about. For more information on other indications for warfarin use, see the chapter at the end of this video. Atrial fibrillation is a type of irregular heart rhythm that affects more than 2 million Americans. When you have atrial fibrillation, your heart does not beat as effectively and blood may pool and form a clot. That clot could break off, travel to your brain, and cause a stroke. Think of a stroke as a brain attack. Blood and oxygen are cut off to parts of your brain, and without them, your brain cannot function. You may experience sudden blurred vision, one-sided weakness, dizziness, or difficulty speaking. If you or someone you know experiences any of these symptoms, you must call 911 immediately. Time lost is brain lost, and every second counts. To give you some statistics, 87% of strokes are caused by a blood clot. Other strokes are caused by a ruptured blood vessel. About 15% of all strokes happen in people with atrial fibrillation. Appropriate use of warfarin can reduce your risk of stroke by 68%. Warfarin is available as a generic and as brand Coumadin. They're equally safe and effective, and it's okay to use either. But once you pick, it is best to stay with that medication. Both generic and brand warfarin offer the same tablet strengths in the same colors, but with different shapes. Warfarin should be taken once daily at the same time every day, preferably in the evening, with or without food. Taking warfarin in the evening makes it easier for your health care provider to adjust the dose when needed. It is very important to use a pill box to make sure you take the right dose every day. If you forget to take a dose, the most important thing is not to double up. If you remember within 12 hours, you can take the dose. If you don't remember within 12 hours, skip it and write down the date of the missed dose so you can tell your health care provider. It is very important to take warfarin consistently and at the same time every day. Missing one dose can drastically affect your warfarin levels. How do we monitor warfarin therapy? As you may already know, warfarin is a medication that requires careful and frequent monitoring and dose adjustment. Having too much warfarin in your body puts you at risk for bleeding. Having too little increases your risk for clotting. The key is maintaining a fine balance. In order to monitor your warfarin therapy, your health care provider will check your INR, which is a blood test, look for any signs and symptoms of bleeding or clotting, and ask questions about changes in medications, diet, and lifestyle. INR stands for International Normalized Ratio and is a reflection of your prothrombin time, referred to as PT. 
Your INR tells us how much warfarin is in your bloodstream and how fast your blood clots. Warfarin dosing is based on this number. The higher your INR, the longer it takes for your blood to clot and the higher your risk for bleeding. The lower your INR, the faster your blood will clot and the higher your risk for clotting. Your target INR level is determined by your healthcare provider. It is very important to remain within your target range. The major potential side effect of warfarin is bleeding, especially when your INR is high. Bleeding symptoms to look for and report include unusual bruising or bruises that won't heal, unusual or prolonged bleeding from your nose or gums, dark brown, pink, or red urine, or red or black tarry stools. The levels of warfarin in your body can be affected by several things, including other medications like antibiotics. It is important that you do not start, stop, or change any medications without talking to your health care provider. Also, some common over-the-counter medications like aspirin, ibuprofen or Advil and Motrin, and naproxen or Aleve should be avoided unless otherwise directed by your health care provider. Don't forget that dietary and herbal supplements including vitamins can also affect your bleeding or clotting risk. You may have heard that the amount of vitamin K in your diet can also affect the level of warfarin in your body. This is true. Certain foods like green, leafy vegetables, as in spinach or broccoli, are high in vitamin K and can work against warfarin and lower your INR so you are more likely to form a clot. This does not mean, however, that you should avoid these foods. The best thing to do is to maintain a consistent diet over the course of a week. So, if you like to eat salads and greens every day, that's great. If you only like to eat them two or three times a week, that's okay too. Just try to be consistent and your dose will take into account your diet. Alcohol, including wine, beer, or cocktails, can also affect the amount of warfarin in your body. Drinking more alcohol than what you are used to can lead to a sharp rise in your INR and can increase your risk for bleeding. Ideally, it is best to avoid alcohol while you are taking warfarin. However, it is generally also reasonable to just limit alcohol intake to one to two drinks per day. As with your diet, consistency is the key.